Hello and welcome to another amazing dancing dialogue. It's actually 1st of 2023 and I'm very honored and blessed to have my dear friend Ambreen here today. And Ambreen is now also a very accomplished author. And what we are dancing today in dialogue is about her book, but beyond that book, but yet sharing with you some beautiful insights. So our topic that came up, as it always does very spontaneously, is remembering who we are. And we will have a beautiful dialogue to explore how Ambrin has found the key to unlock how to remember who we are in her book. It is yours, Ambrin. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, Patrick, for having me here. And as you know, um, whenever we have conversation, it comes spontaneously. And then the connection is like, so I would say heart to heart that it is deeper. And we tend to share our thoughts and it it just flows. And we we when we share our thoughts, the truth reveals so i think that's what is gonna be in today's episode and we're gonna discuss that how we are unveiling the truth through our dancing dialogues <laughs> wonderful wonderfully said thank yeah. you so yeah. looking at remembering who we are where would you say your book the algorithms of life give people on an individual level the opportunity to remember where who they are yeah it's a very good question actually because uh, i would say that it takes a time to remember who we are because when when we when a child comes to this world they have pure soul and i feel at that point in time they know exactly who they are and where they, but over the period of time through education, through society, people tell us to think or transform our thinking in a way that we forget who we are, they, they, which takes us far from our soul, basically. And we tend to, you know, keep on, uh, like society keeps telling us that think in a rational way, find out why, what is the reason, why it is happening, connect dots with logic but when we explore ourselves we need to put the logic and rationality behind and need to follow our heart that is intuition so that is my book main purpose that i wrote the book is to make people realize that who we are and that's exactly like a lot of people even i get amazing comment from the people that they love the the chapter soul where I actually, this is exactly where I ask them to remember who they are, because where I've written that we are not just physical bodies. We are not just this logical or rational thinking. We are much more than that. We are the part of universe, but our soul is like over and above than the entire system. And when, and we realize that power, when we know that we are not just the physical being, we are much more than that. We are spiritual, we are our soul, which is actually pure form of energy, you know? So that's that's exactly where our power lies. And we need to remember that because, why, and the, the reason why I'm saying that, you know, when the child is born in this world, they know it, we know it. as And, and that's why you see, um, there is a different glow on kids you know when their company is different they, people like kids like the small babies no matter what you feel that energy you feel the love in their company why because they have the purest soul they know who they are and they know exactly why they are here but we get lost when we grow up and when society tells us something when our parents tell us something and then we forget who we are so yeah. that's the little bit of idea that my yeah, this is so beautifully said because it's really about that this is accessible this remembering who we are is accessible through the heart but yet 
the babies come in like that. And mm -hmm. so in a way, it seems to me also collectively, because I've shared with you, my book is more about the collective side. Collectively, we have chosen that path, that journey, to get disconnected from the soul in one way, so that one day we would remember who we truly are and connect again in wholeness and in oneness. Yes, yes, yes. this is very important. I mean, the, the concept of oneness is, is that's why I was speaking with uh, someone and that's where the topic of oneness came out. And you know, this, the entire thing, like we ourselves as a mind universe, we are one. And the humanity is one. I feel that we, I, I do believe in God is something, but we are the extension of the God. So like, it's not that we are separate from it. Like we are connected with God. We are connected with the universe. And the more we realize that we are one, we go, we, the connection gets stronger. You know, we get closer and closer. And then that's how we attain all these powers. The more we get close to oneness, you realize, you remember who you are. You are not separate from it. Because, you know, as a human being, we, our soul longs for belongingness. You know, we need that belonging. Why? Because we are not separate from the universe. When we see ourselves separate individual, then our soul, you know, uh, feels um the, the, the separation. And then, you know, the feel when you feel the separate, that separation, you feel more anxiety you feel and that's why you see a lot of people they uh, even yesterday i shared my video about the success you know a lot of people put uh think that success is about title about these uh, things it's not about this it's about the thing that you become and then you become you realize that you are not separate from each other we are not separate from each other we are part of one system one humanity one universe one god and we are just all connected and the more we realize it, that is the power of oneness we gave. And then we become supernatural, super, uh, super powerful, I would say. Yes. So we all have that power, just need to realize it. Exactly. And it's so beautiful how you put it. It's the separation that we have also created. Because as you said, we are the, we are the past, we are the future, we are the, we are the here and now. And so humanity, and we can see that in history, has consciously separated from God. Yes. Has consciously separated from oneness. And not only that, has consciously separated from our soul and the heart. Yeah. And so it is so exciting, actually, to see that now we are in a time where even the universe, the stars, the astronomy, the astrology, the energy, the vibration is supporting us come back together in oneness and maybe mm -hmm. the most important part as you just said it so beautifully about remembering who we are is that yeah. remembering that we are in oneness yes and maybe our superpowers that i call uniqueness can all yes. really come forth when we are one as absolutely if I walk just as a human and I do my human thing without my soul, without my heart, with my connection to God, universe, whatever I want to call it, I'm not going anywhere. I will not have success. Exactly. exactly. It's also interesting that what, what you also said very beautifully, that in that connection and in that longing for that connection is also the human desire, the true desire beyond the success of titles yes. and status is actually the need, the longing for being together. Exactly, exactly. This is something very important. You, you know what that I personally feel that the entire, this, the, this, uh, the desire for belongingness. And again, like if you see, if you take it as a belongingness or as a desire for love, basically. Yes. That is the most powerful force in the entire universe. And, and the concept of love is actually so much misunderstood by the entire society. And the main culprit, I would say, is media, which glamorize this 
this beautiful emotion of love has just you know as a status or, or is this something like link with like let's say romantic love and that's it it's not only this love is much more than that it's that's what we, we said it's the 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 feeling of the desire of belongingness is actually is the search of that love that love that is that is flowing from the god or the universe or whatever this oneness and that that is attracting us and you know and that desire to move toward that love is pulling us toward the oneness but the thing is because of all these uh, rational thinking or i would say societal norms which actually pull us apart and that separation from this then our heart our soul suffers because of that separation because we long for that belongingness that love that that is given by let's say god or the universe we need to go in that direction and that is the pure form of love that we need to explore or we need to remember that you know that we are already given that love we are part of this we just need to remember this and realize and then connect with it how beautiful yes and as you were speaking it comes so clear to me in popular culture let's just call it this in general we are told it's a neediness for love yes and neediness doesn't lead anywhere because you have a bunch of expectations conditions that have nothing to do with love and love actually has nothing to do with another it is the love that we have within and the connection that we have to the divine yeah and so i feel it is so beautiful when we remember we are truly a spark a seed of love of god of the divine yes yes and it's not the neediness that takes us there it's the readiness that super yes absolutely it's in the remembering it's not what somebody <laughs> tells us what we need in our life longing i feel is more from the soul yes it is a soul understanding of remembering what we're really here for and what we're here to do we are here to yes. love we are here to come together yes and I just love how we flow again today, how your wisdom is just triggering all my buttons to, to bring it all together in this beautiful way. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's actually now we are just, since we are talking about this, we are conversing and like it, it also coming to me and like, you know, as we said that like our soul longs for it, but at the same time, that how we actually connect to it, it's basically that we need to, it's not only the neediness and something, it's something that um, I would just say, I would share here my experience that, you know, um, <clears throat> which I realized about this concept of love and I became a mother and, you know, this is one of the most beautiful experience. And I realized that, you know, when you, when you actually love someone that much, because, you know, when, when you, you, I think you cannot love much more than when, uh, more than your kids. But when I became a mother, I realized that, you know, I, I feel much more power or I feel much more better when I give love, you know, because when, when a child is born, they are completely dependent on you. Not a single thing. They cannot do anything. Right. And I, I, I used to think that, you know, they are like our kids are, are a, a kind of, you know, if you think from the other like rational perspective, they are the burden on us, like physically, mentally, financially, spiritually, yet they are the source of love and they are the source of energy for us. But the thing is, then I realized is, you know, the way, the more we give is basically the more we feel good and the more we get love. It's not, I mean, the neediness is something, it's kind of, I, I don't know how to articulate it, but it's not exactly just gaining. It's the, the desire to give something. And the more you give, the actually you feel more satisfied and loved. And I think that's how it is. Uh, that's how you come together to the oneness. Because, and as you asked in the beginning, that why I wrote the book, it's basically to share the knowledge, to give what I have. And, and the more I give, I feel more energetic. I feel more, and, and even like 
a few days back, um, uh, I had a discussion with one of my friends and like, she was asking, that, how do you manage uh, like social media? How do you manage your projects? How do you manage house, your kids and something? So like, I said like, you know, what I like the most is about writing and sharing knowledge because when I do that, when I share my knowledge, when I give knowledge, it it gives me energy it gives me satisfaction and then i don't need something else to you know look for to get myself rejuvenated so i feel that the more we give that the neediness is not just to take it it's to give it and that's what we need to remember it it's not something because we all have it and that's like rumi said that whatever we seek outside is actually it's within we just need to look within and we need to find out that it's already there. The love is not outside, it's inside. We need to see and then the more we see and the more we give, that's how we get more love. Yes. So that's my concept. Wonderful, wonderful. It makes my heart sing. I, I feel that. I... And you know, it's so beautiful what you said because I... the source of love within us that comes from God yes the divine again whatever we want to name it but yeah. that is boundless it's infinite yes. and as you said the more we give the more energized we energy we get yes what comes back is the natural flow it's just like that yeah. in yeah. the inca tradition in the shamanic tradition of the incas we call it aini Aini is that sacred reciprocal relationship that is not based on I give you so you need to give me back. Yes. Not that. Yes. It is I am the infinite source and I apply it now to love. I am the infinite source of love. It's my job to give love. And as you said, it's so beautiful with children. You know, of yes. course, I also have children in my life. They're not my own. I have the plants, I have animals, yeah. and I have that connection, obviously, to the divine. But as more as you give, you regenerate and rejuvenate anyway. And as you give, your hands are open and you are receiving, yeah. you know? Yes. So that reciprocal part is a natural cause. But if I feel I have very little love, and if I give it all, then I don't have anything left for myself, I live in fear and I become needy. So yeah. it is very important and you pointed it out beautifully. It's important to remember that we are love, an infinite source of love. And the yes. more we give it, the more we are energized and the more it also will return without expectation. Yes, yes, that's a really important point without expectation, because then it is not love, I would say. And that's why I gave the example of the kids or children, because, you know, as as a, as a mother, I feel that when I like love my child, I don't expect them to love them. It's just naturally. I just love them. And that's it. And exactly. We need to apply the same to um, to others as well. Like when we need to give them, give love. And, and that's exactly I want to just highlight that neediness is not to receive. Then the need is to give. And that is something we are completely misunderstand that, you know, the need is not something that we need to receive. It's not like that. It's the need is to give. And, and now the thing is like the society tells us when you need, you need to ask for that. You don't need to ask for it. You need to give. The more you give, the more you get. And the more, like, let's say, if, if, you, if I have the urge to share knowledge, I will get, gain more knowledge. If I have the desire to share love, I will get more love. So whatever your focus is to give, you will attract more. And that's that's exactly it. It's ex as simple as that. And I, I really love the way you say it because then what comes back, I'm open to receive. I am not yes. conditioned. I don't want it this way or another way. And as you mentioned, children, when I walk here on the street in our village, I greet all the children. I know a lot of names and it's also sharing love, right? It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Love. And I have no expectation what's coming back. 
And so in that openness, what I often receive in a blink of a moment is incredible. You know, I, I get feedback or you get a smile or you get an answer or it's just incredible. Yeah. As you open, you lose the measures that we think we should have. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And this is something very particular as we remember that we are love and we are here to give love. Yeah. We are experiencing love in so many different ways that you wouldn't even see yes if you don't have that openness yes yes so it's beautiful how you make this example with your children but as at the end of the day it applies <laughs> everywhere exactly exactly but children are really such true. a good example and such a beautiful opportunity and and i can imagine you have these experiences every, every day giving this love to your children and and they do something lovely for their mother and it's like wow yeah exactly actually you know what when we i i was also talking to someone that you know when you have that um the uh intentions to give the thing is you you get more open to receive why because you don't have the fear of losing something you know because that you you get get free from all the fears because you know you don't have the fear of protecting something or something because you you don't have to worry about it but you are free to give something so that's okay if someone comes and takes it you don't have any fear and that 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 state of being free from fear gives you so much power and so much openness to receive uh, something because you are an open source and then anybody can come and you can give and then you're free to you know you feel more confident so it it comes in like a lot of uh, i mean it uh, helps us grow in lots of aspects of life you know when we have this intentionality of giving them it 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 helps our it boosts our self esteem it boosts our self confidence it it helps us open to receive opportunities it changes our mindset and then once you change that mindset you know it it attracts everything it, it attracts abundance in your life i am so happy i think we brought this to a concluding point which is absolutely fabulous about remembering who you are it is really about as you remember how you, who you are you remember that you're abundant love and you don't need to fear that you don't have enough that you are not yeah. enough that you're not yeah. getting enough so yeah. remembering who we are is, is is remembering we are love infinite boundless we don't need to fear and it is it is very interesting that in all spiritual teachings and, and rumi is of course i can't cite one now but <laughs> Sure, there's some yeah. as we recognize we are truly love fear yeah. is really disappearing because the fear is of oh, i don't have enough yes you don't love me yeah i'm not this i'm not that i'm the other but as we are fully remembering that we are love yeah. we have no fear yeah we are whole in ourselves exactly and here comes again that unique wholeness that we're then experiencing and then we can share that in the oneness yes so i am really grateful for this beautiful dancing dialogue this is new archetypes so for those who are listening we are stepping out people like ambrin and myself and all the other beautiful people on this planet who are in that spirit in that remembering space of remembering who we are we're writing books we're sharing with you what we have from the heart to love yes <laughs> and to ignite that remembering in everybody else yeah i yeah. i'm looking forward to have another dancing dialogue with you Umbra. sure sure we can i mean actually we can go on and on on this topic <laughs> seriously we can have a series of this and because um, this topic is so close to my heart and this right. and and the more we talk a bit like-minded people because we get into the same frequency level attract those thoughts that flows and then as i said in the beginning that you know that helps us 
uncover the truth because even like in during that the conversation like a lot of ideas came to my mind which we which were never there before <laughs> and then like you know and we just uncovered the truth yes. and we find out lots of new ideas the way or how to move forward especially write uh, our book and share love yes beautiful so we invite our audience to get inspired to find yeah. this ignition to their own wholeness to their own love and all that we have shared today and today i want to mention again yes that book is available by ambrin and i think it's very easy for you to find it the algorithms of life it's on mm -hmm. amazon and everywhere i will actually put the link into the comments so people can go and directly buy it Thank you so much. So <laughs> yeah. my final words are, I really honor and appreciate. I'm grateful for this wonderful connection that you and I have across the miles, across cultures, and yeah. yet being such beautiful conduits for yeah. this new consciousness that is unfolding and the beautiful part that we are able to play to help remember people, yeah. help people to remember who they truly are. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm I'm very grateful to you for actually yes for having this connection because uh, not a lot of people understand the exact concept and appreciate it. But yes, there are people like you who understand this and value this, and uh, and and giving me this opportunity to share my ideas, my knowledge and appreciate it so i'm really really grateful for you to actually have to provide me this opportunity to connect with you to share my ideas here and in like the other like conversation that we had so thank you so much it's it's always like i always learn from you and we also like you know somehow grow together when we connect with each other yeah yeah, this is exactly how I feel. We're growing together. We learn from each other because yeah. we are love and we are one. Yeah. Thank you Absolutely. so much for today. Thank you. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay.